Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a very hard cataract. Nuclear sclerosis is grade 6. We can see the dark brown appearance of the cataract. Let us observe this totally unedited surgery. The main incision has been made. A side port has been made on the right side of the main incision. And this is another side port on the left side of the main incision. And now, an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber. Beneath this air bubble, tripan blue dye is applied on all parts of the anterior capsule. The dye should touch all parts of the anterior capsule. When we apply the dye underneath an air bubble, staining is quick. Little bit of adrenaline has been applied. Now the dye is washed out and after washing the dye, the anterior chamber is filled up with a dispersive viscoelastic substance. This is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Methyl cellulose is applied over the anterior capsule for better visibility. Now I use a Utrita forceps to do capsular axis. And in such hard cataract, the axis should be adequate, it should not be less than 5.5 millimeter. It should be between 5 and it can be up to 6 millimeter. So this is an adequate sized rexis and now hydrodissection is done with 27 gauze cannula. Fluid is injected at multiple points and the nucleus is tapped and the nucleus rotates nicely. Again 2% SPMC is applied. And now is the time to go into the eye with the FACO handpiece. I am using Faro's from Oatley, Switzerland. I have no financial interest. Now, the FACO needle goes in with its bevel down. Some superficial cortical lens matter is removed and now watch submarine job to divide the nucleus into fragments. The nucleus is pushed downward a bit. The FACO needle goes into the substance of the nucleus. It travels through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator. It starts from 11 o'clock and goes towards 5 o'clock and as it reaches near 5 o'clock the chopper is used to have a very nice crack. Now I rotate the nucleus 180 degree, go to a deeper plane and separate the two heminuclei completely and the two heminuclei are completely separated in this case. And this is Another one heminucleus divided into two large fragments and this is another heminucleus. This is also divided into two large fragments. And now each nuclear fragment is tilted and emulsification of the nuclear fragments are started from the apex. Ultrasonic energy used is 85% in continuous mode. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. In this surgery, Dr. Pravin Chaturvedi from Benaras, India is observer. Dr. Pravin is with me for the first three, four days and 
he is doing very well he is learning direct job this is the third nuclear fragment at this time we have to look at the behavior of the posterior capsule is it coming towards the tip is there any surge how stable is the anterior chamber all these things should be noticed carefully and during emulsification of this last piece the parameters is reduced ultrasonic energy remains almost same it is 75 percent flow rate is 30 and vacuum is 300 millimeter of mercury and very slowly very gradually keeping the tip at the central part the last portion of the nucleus is emulsified and there is some epinucleus at 3 o'clock it is removed and some more epinucleus here superiorly and now in this case I made two sideboards to use bimanual irrigation aspiration. So, I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration cannoli. First, I introduce the irrigating probe into the anterior chamber, go all around along the equator of the capsular bag so that the cortex get hydrated and it comes easily whenever we have bimanual irrigation aspiration in our surgical armamentarium we can approach cortex wherever it is we have 360 degree approach with bimanual irrigation aspiration. Now, there are some cells sticking to the posterior capsule in this case, I'm trying to polish that, remove that with just irrigation. And I find some cortex at 8 o'clock. And it is it is not coming it's putting some resistance to come out so I inject a little bit of visco and now I take the simco cannula and remove the cortex from 8 o'clock. Few more fibers attached to the posterior capsule at 5 o'clock uh, also removed by this gentle instrument. So, the posterior capsule is very clean now and now we have to implant an intraocular lens. The capsular bag as well as the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. The main wound is enlarged little bit because I am going to use a B cartridge for implantation of the intraocular lens. And now here goes the intraocular lens, a single piece monofocal hydrophobic intraocular lens is placed in the capsular bag. The lens is dialed and the haptics are kept in such a way that it is little away from the main wound. 
the idea is to wash the capsular bag nicely. The capsular bag is nicely irrigated and then the antechamber is also irrigated. Then irrigation and aspiration by the Simco cannula is done for some time. Still lot of visco is there. And now I'm going to use the irrigating probe of bimanual irrigation aspiration. The irrigation cannula is used for some time. And a lot of visco from antechamber as well as from capsular bag is removed just by irrigation. Now I use irrigation and aspiration together and most of the visco molecules are removed by this time. Now this is a bit of moxifloxacin. Then the side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma. Hydrate, don't hydrate much. Hydrate only that much to occlude the incision site. At this time, a gentle stream of VSS goes towards the corneal endothelium as I do the final lavage. The antechamber is nicely formed. Integrity of all the wounds are checked and then few drops of moxie is applied and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.